to dance, it's time for us to give God some praise. I want to see all my island people get up and give God a great praise tonight, amen? Let's do it together. If you know this song, I want you guys all to join in with us together, alright? Amen? Let's dance! And if you can't dance, do like me, just sway from side to side. Say I believe. I believe. I believe in you. I trust in you. In you. Oh Lord, oh, Lord. Jehovah. Jehovah, you. I trust. I trust in you. In you. Say I believe. Say, I believe. I believe. You are the God. You are the God of miracles. You are the God. Somebody wave a bye-bye. Somebody wave a bye-bye. 
experience. Past experience. Glory of your goodness. Oh, let us become more. Let us experience your love, Jesus. Worship Center. We'd like to thank you all for your love and your support. We truly could not do this without you. Please continue to send your tithes and your offering through our e-transfer, which is faithoutreachwccanada at gmail.com. Or you can visit our office located at 1095 Bellamy Road on Mondays between the hours of 12 noon to 2 p.m. Please remember, strength for today, bright hope for tomorrow. God bless. First Sunday of 2021. 
just a few days ago. We sing, two days ago, we sing Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I wish you a Happy New Year. God has been good to us. We have lived to see the first Sunday of 2021, the new year, and truly, we must celebrate God's goodness and God's mercies and kindness. Let us remember this, that this new year is promising to be a challenging year, but we know that with the help of God and with God on our side, there's no challenge too big for us because God is on our side. Let us take time to trust the Lord, depend on the Lord, and rely upon His promises. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's a new start. And we know that with the help of God, we are going to make it through. There are many good things, brothers and sisters, that's ahead of us. And as we start the new year with Jesus, let's trust Him and rely upon Him. This morning, I want to read from Philippians 3, verses 13 and 14. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth under those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of their calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Father, thank you this morning for the new year. Thank you for the first Sunday of the year. And I'm glad, God, that we have someone who is reliable, dependable, faithful, and trustworthy, and that's me. As we embark upon this new journey, God, I pray that you help us to trust you, to rely upon you. And I pray that the body of believers and the church will experience revival amidst God, the pandemic, and amidst an environment that's full of fear and doubt and dread. Help us, oh God, in this new year to rely on you, to trust you, and to allow you to lead us in the direct our path. I pray, oh Lord God, that every believer will experience a new move and a new touch of their lives, and that God, we will walk in humility and in submission to you, your purpose. Bless us today. Say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. One thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forth under those things which are before. I want to preach on the topic today, a new start. The month of January is named after the Roman god Janus, who was depicted as a man with two faces. One face looked back into the year that had passed, and that face bore traces of sorrow, dismay, and perplexity. The other face looked forward, is forward looking, personified hope, trust, and confidence. And at this time of the year, one cannot help looking back. Many of us traditionally take stock at the opening of the new year. Has the past year been one of fear, doubt, and anxiety? If it's been so, you need to read the words of Paul in Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the calling of God in Christ Jesus. In simple terms, Paul tells us that we should forget the things which are behind us. Yes, we have some horrible times in the past year, but we need to forget the things which are behind us, because they're all behind us. And Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. 
one of the great barriers to making a new start is the horror of the past. Failures as well as successes constantly harasses us until we are afraid to attempt any new thing. If we would forget the things that are behind us, we will make new strides in this new year. My friend, we cannot dwell on the past. We can hold on to the past. The past is the past. It can't come back. One thing we need to know is this. Past sins must be forgiven. Forgetting those things which are behind. There can be no forgetting without forgiveness. For God requires that which is past. Ezekiel 3.15 Paul was doubtless conscious of the many failures and sins in his life. The way he had blasphemed the name of Jesus, and persecuted the church of God. This was of honor him day and night. But the time came when he honed up to his sins and having confessed them, entered into the experience of forgiveness and cleansing. My brothers and sisters, past sin must be forgiven. In a similar way, if we would know a first start, if you and I would know a first start in our lives, we must experience the forgiveness of our past sins. Thank God, the Bible says in 1 John 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. My brothers and sisters, forgetting the things that are behind, forget past injuries. Forget past unkind words. My brothers and sisters, we must forget the things which are behind us in this new year as we step out. Let us be too busy to quarrel. Be too great to be too great to be unkind. And be too wise to gossip. Too strong to, to permit little things to annoy us. Be too clean to stay in your character with any character of impurity. My brothers and sisters, past sin must be forgiven. We need to trust God today so we can step forward. No matter what the world is saying, no matter what the devil is saying, with God on our side, we can experience a fresh start. We can experience a new move. We can experience the power of God moving in our lives and pushing us forward. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Another thing is this, that past success must be forsaken. Forgetting those things which are behind. Sometimes we dwell on some things too much and for too long. Employing the metaphorical language of the race course, Paul speaks of leaving behind the previous stages of the race. He implies that he must not waste time surveying his purpose. Only one thing is important, that is running so as to win. My brothers and sisters, if you dwell on the past, you can't move forward. The past will hold you back. Forgetting those things which are behind. One of the most subtle devices of the enemy for, for slowing us down in our Christian lives is that of engaging our minds and hearts with the memory of the past or of past successes. If we are going to live lives of present holiness and victory, we must necessarily concentrate more on today than on yesterday. Yesterday is gone. Let us focus on today, now, the new year, trusting and believing God. My brothers and sisters, God wants us to move in this new year, forgetting the past, hurt the past, pain the past, and God wants us to move depending and relying upon Him. It is important that we stay 
The story of Sir Winston Churchill visited the United States in World War II. He was heard to say that if the present quarrels with the past, there can be no future. And the point he was making was that we have to accept the past as unalterable and move from there. To stay and quarrel with the past or be preoccupied with it is to ruin our future. My friends, it makes no sense you quarrel with the past. It makes no sense you be preoccupied with the past. You need to leave it behind and step forward saying, I press towards the mark for the prize of the iconic. My brothers and sisters, this new year is a year of pressing into God's kingdom. Paul had a most eventful and illustrious past. But he realized that to be preoccupied with it was to divert his focus from the present. My brothers and sisters, let us focus on the present. It's a new year, new challenges, new issues. But with the help of God, we can have a new start and we can move through being victorious, being more than a conqueror, marching from victory unto victory. Let us make sure that our past sins are forgiven and that our past successes are forsaken. Only then can we step out into a new life in Christ. My brothers and sisters, the past year is gone. Leave the past behind. Step ahead with a new start in Jesus Christ. God promised to do a new thing for his people Behold, I do a new thing, and it shall come to pass. The new start will produce new things in your life, new blessing, new joy, new peace, new hope. Open new doors on your behalf. My brothers and sisters, you need to trust God today for a new start. As we embark in this new year, not knowing what it holds, one thing we are assured of is that God our Savior and our Redeemer, He is able. We should foresee the things which are before us. My brothers and sisters, when we know the promises of God, irrespective of what's going on in the world, we will trust God and that His promises are sure. Hear what Paul says. Reaching forth unto those things which are before us. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We should foresee the things which are before us. The apostle has at least two important objectives in mind, which we need to have in mind. In essence, we can describe them as eventualities of life and the responsibilities of life. Let us consider each of these. The eventualities of life, reaching forth unto those things which are before. Thank God. Thank God that we can trust Him. Most people are afraid of the future. Most people today are afraid of what's going to happen in the next few months because of the projection, the prediction of what's going to happen because of the COVID. But my friend, if you believe in God and you're walking in His will and walking in His purpose, you don't need to be afraid of the future. The song, because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fears are gone. And because I know he owns a future, life is worth the living just because he lives. We don't need to be afraid of what is before us. As long as we take a step and march in faith with God at our side. My friends, uncertainty and insecurity about the days that lies ahead fill the heart of many with fear. But I want you to understand today, amidst the uncertainty and amidst the insecurity, insecurity, there is a God. Our God stands, reaching out to us saying, I will see you through. For Christians, there need to be no fear. 
There need to be no worry. There need to be no doubt. There need to be no uncertainty surrounding us. There's nothing that can ever happen which isn't already known by God and included in his permissive will. Nothing can happen that God doesn't know. He has foreknowledge. There is a sense that through trust in the living God, we can foresee the things which are before us. And the eventualities of life need neither terrify nor disturb us. Why? Because God holds tomorrow in his hands. He holds the future in his hands. You don't need to be afraid. My brothers and sisters, God is in front of us. God Almighty is there already waiting for you to come. He is in your tomorrows. He's in your next month. He is God and you can trust him. God is in your tomorrow. He's there already. And all tomorrows of our life have to pass through him. And we know that God holds everything in his hands and your life is secure in your God. This year, will you trust your God? Will you hold on to the fact that your life is in the hands of God? So we see the eventualities of life. We have to face them, but God Almighty have our future in his hands. The responsibilities of life. I press towards the mark for the prize of the calling of God in Christ Jesus. The picture is still that of a runner whose eyes are on the finish line. No one can ever make a success of life without having a goal before him. Some have said that if you aim at nothing, you are sure to eat nothing. The Apostle Paul points out that the goal of every Christian should be the prize of their calling of God in Christ Jesus. Without doubt, the prize is the reward at the judgment seat of Christ. My friends, let us hold on to God and trust Him. What greater achievement in life can any believer foresee than that of being crowned that day in glory. The great apostle could say as he neared the end of his race in the book, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. My friends, we can trust God. Let us hold on to God. Take the responsibility of life. Live for God. Walk with God. Serve God. Put your faith in God. No matter what the prediction may be, it may seem dismal, but when you trust in the living God, He will see you through. My friends, the Bible declares, no weapon that form against us shall prosper. God Almighty is the one we can trust. And I can guarantee you, that when you walk with Him, He will see you through this new year. No no need to worry, no need to fret. God Almighty will see you through. To show that the responsibilities of every Christian involve righteous living in the present day, this is the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. My friends, we must live righteous in our present day. We must live holy in this present day. My friends, God is calling us to the higher and holy calling. If you will live for God, you will see that this year, coming year, this new year will be a success for you. Living the holy, the righteous life such a quality of life demands separation and consecration. And that should be worked out in your everyday experience. And this means following the Lord Jesus Christ at whatever the cost may be. Righteous living, my friend, is crowned with reward that living in the future day. And my friends, you can't afford to miss this. There is a price to win in the future. How we live here on earth this year will determine our status and authority in coming days when Jesus shall reign 
over the universe. The Bible tells us, if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. We can't afford, my brothers and sisters, to look back and worry about the past. The past is the past. You can't bring it back. Let us trust the Lord and depend upon him. One thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are ahead, I press towards the mark of the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. My friends, we should fulfill the things which are beyond us. Not behind, but beyond us. In verse 12, Paul said, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Commenting on this passage, Dr. Mark the, Mark the Hand says, self-satisfaction is the death of progress. Dissatisfaction with past accomplishment is the mother of invention. So because man was dissatisfied with carrying and lifting loads upon his shoulder, he invented vehicles to ride in. And he said, pity the man who is content with his own progress and feels he has arrived. This is all the more true in the Christian life. Nothing here is as deadly as self-satisfaction. The most boring people you can ever meet are, are the ones who take up your time by telling you what they have done when they are to be doing more for the Lord. My brothers and sisters, let us not be satisfied, but let us press on, moving forward, doing the best we can to trust God. In the life of faith, we move, my brothers and sisters, from strength to strength. We abound more and more. We proceed from glory to glory in the life of faith. Perfection for the Apostle Paul was nothing less than being conformed to the image and the likeness of Christ. This is why he declared his great ambition in those unforgettable words that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. To know Christ and to be made like him, we must experience. We need really and truly to have a new and a first experience of God in this new year. We must experience his resurrection power. This new start this new year, we must experience his resurrection power. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. The resurrection power of Jesus Christ is that divine dynamic which raised him from the dead. Conquering all the powers of sin and Satan. For us to know this resurrection power is to be able to live in constant victory, which Paul affirms when he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My brothers and sisters, let us strive this year within our new start to know Christ in all power, to know Christ in all his authority. My friends, let us make sure that we have a fresh experience with our God as we enter this new year and we live for him. My friend, we need a first experience of his redemptive passion. But I may know him and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. This is more than suffering for Christ. It is suffering with Christ. Indeed, it is the highest form of suffering for it is sharing with the risen Lord a redemptive passion for a lost world. None of us can know this redemptive passion without being concerned with the needs of our fellow men. 
the chaos of this present world and the desperate need of getting out of getting out the gospel with this message to the lost world and sharing forgiveness, the forgiveness of Christ with the lost world. My brothers and sisters, we need to realize that God wants us to forget the past, move forward in his power, in his authority, and with his help, we will defeat the powers of darkness. Hear me, forget about the past. Some, many people grumble every day and complain about what happened yesterday and who did me this. My friend, if you want really to move forward and to move forward successfully, you must forget the past, move forward in faith with the Lord Jesus Christ. He alone and he alone will help you through. All we can do is to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you this new year, forget what is behind you. Foresee what is before you. Fulfill what is beyond you. And with God enabling power, he will give you passion to live for him. Whatever your life has been in the past, rejoice in the knowledge that you can make a new start. Whatever your life has been in the past, rejoice in the fact that you can have a fresh start. Jesus is the Savior of the world and he's a, the God of a new beginning. This new year, you can have a fresh start, a new beginning. All you got to do is trust the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All the things are passed away and behold, all things become new. My brothers and sisters, it is time to forget the past and to look ahead because God Almighty, he promised he's going to lead us and see us through. No matter how dismal it may seem, our God is able Thank God today we serve a mighty God who promised to see us through in this troublesome times. Remember, all around us today is bad news. All around us today, men and women are walking in fear. Men or women, they're living their lives in fear, not knowing if they're going to die tomorrow. But I want you to understand. As believers, we can live with faith, confidence, and assurance in our God. No matter what happened to us, we're still safe in the arms of Jesus. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. As you embark on this new year, forget the things which are behind. Forget what happened in the past. Make a new start. Trust your God, and I can assure you, He will see us through. There's a song we used to sing, I never worry, I never fret my friend, because Jesus, He never fails me yet. And I know that our God is truly in charge, and He is in control. No matter how severe the pandemic in this world may seem, God is in control. So you can press ahead and push along in your new start with your God. Will you serve him? Will you surrender? Will you submit? Will you yield your life to him? Will you allow him to be your guide? Will you allow him to be your savior and your redeemer? He said, come unto me, all that are labor and every labor, and I will give you rest. You can trust God. He said, I come to seek and to save that which was lost. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. You can have a new start with Jesus this year, and he promised he will see you through. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, thank you that your words are sure and they declare to us how we can have a fresh start with you. In this new year, I pray that in the hearts of your people, 
they will commit themselves to forget the things which are behind, reaching forward to the things which are ahead, trusting in the power, the ability, and the authority of their God. I pray that many will come in the kingdom, men and women, whose life is marked by fear. I pray that we will trust you and confess God and their fear and their sins before you. Oh, Lord God, I pray that there be a, a revival of souls in the kingdom this new year. I pray that your people will take time to rejoice and celebrate, knowing that with you, we are safe and secure. I thank you and praise you for this new year and for a new beginning and for a new start. In Jesus' name. Amen.